in any art form. It is for the investors, fine. So I don't think about it that way. I have very loving uh, uh, feelings towards Follies, which did not make money at the box office. Uh, but I, the fact that it didn't make money doesn't in any way affect my criticism of it or what I think was wrong with it. Because what I think was wrong with it, had I fixed that, had we fixed it, uh, that wouldn't have made it any more successful at the box office. It would just made it more successful with us. Sure. What about the, the so-called mindless musical that uh, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> fills the bill of the, the tourist who wants to just get away from everything and... Um, There's room for everything. There, I really but think that. Uh, something that I read that you said, said that, um, that among the things there's room for is a good mindless musical and a bad mindless musical. Uh, are there examples of those that we could uh, focus on? Well, I'm not going to name them. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. But I, I don't tend to enjoy uh, uh, mindless musicals. Uh, I do, however, enormously enjoy funny, entertaining musicals that don't have a particular message. I mean, one of the best musicals ever written is Guys and Dolls. It's, yeah. It certainly doesn't have a, a, an important message, but that doesn't diminish it in the least. It would be among my five favorite all-time musicals. So I love them, but that's artistic work. Uh, just to go in and... Uh, and have a dopey time in the theater? No. I didn't go into the theater to go into musicals in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yes, apparently you, you were only... I didn't like musicals You didn't as a care kid. for the music. I didn't go to them, we were a little no. revolted by all that dancing and I, singing. I, yes, all that good-natured, happy celebration stuff? Never. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I went to theater, and what excited me about theater was the specific collaboration of mm. the audience and the actor, the, li the live actor and the live audience. And it seemed to me that they were definitely affecting each other and that no two performances on that stage would ever be the same because the audience was never the same, among other things. Mm. And that's a very exciting energy that's operating there. And the other thing is that I don't have a lot of trouble laughing and I don't have a lot of trouble having a perfectly congenial trivial time. And I certainly don't have any trouble sleeping, which a lot of people love the theater for. Really, you know what I mean? They, they, they love to go in and have a nice soporific time and then nod off and then come to and they haven't missed much and it's been a swell evening. The, the, I don't need the theater for that at all. I would much prefer to be moved to anger. Tears. Terrific tears. It happens rarely. And to argument after the theater. That's terrific. Fighting it out about what it was about and what... The, well, do you agree with it? You, you don't have to agree saw. with it. Yeah. It just has to, to, to create something, some excitement in you. And that's the way the theater was when I was a kid. It's the way that theater ceased to be for a while, unless you really were very selective. And it's the way I think the theater is becoming again. I'm very optimistic about the state of the theater in the future. You can see that changing. Sure, yeah. because I think people are coming back to the theater. I think younger people who just opted out in the 60s didn't care about the theater, wasn't speaking to them at all. I think we're also willing to engage because our playwrights are willing to engage. They have a little objectivity. We've been through Watergate. We've, we've, we've put, we hope we've put aside all those things which shackled us, the frustrations and the sense of not being a part of our own destinies. And I think that, that now that perspective and a sense of optimism and a sense of, of, of maybe being a contributor uh, all those things excite theatrical creativity. Uh, I, I think it's, it's, we're entering a good time. Do you, do you ever met anyone who was at the, uh, what was it, the opening of um, Playboy of the Western World when, in New York and, and the audience became so excited that people threw rosaries on stage at the actors oh, and terrific. Uh, went out and uh, oh boy. rioted in the streets? That's, that's what you... Uh, I that vividly remember occasions. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember Lorette Taylor. It's almost a cliche to say it, 
But I sat in the second balcony. I think it was the Hudson. I'm not sure. It was uh, uh, one of those theaters that's since gone. And I saw The Glass Menagerie. And I can, uh, I have a, an actor's term, a sense memory that's mm -hmm. that specific of that performance and the thrill I felt in that theater. I remember Olivier in Oedipus. Uh, Which, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. Well, and that, that Oedipus. And the, yeah. That Oedipus. Mm -hmm. And the scream he let out was something else. You know, I spoke to him. Uh, it's, this is risky because this program might be on before. Here we go again. Kind of, but I, I, I either spoke to him or I'm about to uh, on that. And he, he, meant, he, re he revealed something about that famous cry that I, I had never he heard before. Really? And that was that it was on a certain syllable sound that he said was very effective. It was the ER sound, er, oh, which he thought boy. made it. That now, of course, there has to be more to it than that because if you and I said er, well, if I did at least. No, I, it uh, wouldn't work for me either. It wouldn't be quite the same, I have a feeling. No, but that's, that's craft, though. Mm -hmm. You have to know that, too. It's not just about screaming because the, the feeling inside says scream. That's it, wondrous stuff. Do you, do you prefer actors who can explain how they did it, or those who say, ah, it's just a mystery to me, I don't ever think about it? Uh, Olivia. Well, over the long, well, he can explain. Apparently. Over the long run, uh, you prefer actors who can explain, because mm -hmm. they give more uh, good performances more consistently than actors who can't explain. The inspired performance, which just comes out of somebody who can't explain it, is lovely, but I wouldn't want to count on it too frequently. <laughs> it, it might not be their own... Uh, more than five out of eight nights. You, you bet. <laughs> Have you acted ever, Hill? No. No, it scared the aren't hell you, out of me. You wouldn't even go on and... Uh, aren't you ever tempted to go on as a sign carrier or something? Not in Evita? the least. My first job, I was an assistant stage manager, and I had to go on in a review called Tickets, Please, with the Hartmans. Mm -hmm. And that was just the job. The second assistant stage manager went on in a couple of sketches. And uh, I was hopeless. I laughed a lot, and they used to have to have meetings about how it's not professional to laugh, and they were such gentle people, the Hartmans, that they didn't want to pinpoint the only person who was laughing, so they'd have the whole cast sit around and say, we have to stop laughing during the show, and it was just... Did they all turn and uh, look at you and... <laughs> I guess. I guess it was pretty obvious. Have you learned to control this terrible habit of yours of giggling? And... <laughs> well, I haven't been on the stage since. It's all stopped there, you know? No, I'd scare the hell out of me to act. That's something else. I don't know how they do it. Uh, are there other reasons it scares you? Um, Just too nervous. It's supposed to be very good therapy and um, well, supposed to be very good uh, release and all of that. I don't know. <laughs> no, it just never occurred to me. No offers. Cabaret is a show that almost everybody knows about because it was also a movie. I mean, at least more people do. Uh, you, you altered that somehow, almost in the, sex of, in the sexual sense of altered. Mm -hmm. uh, that it was a mistake. It, the Isherwood story ha had a homosexual theme which you decided to... That was 1965 or, when yeah. we were doing that show. And we were doing a show about Nazis, about the rise of Nazism. We were doing it in a style which at that point had not had certainly not been used on Broadway, not, and not in my memory, uh, which is to say fragmented mm -hmm. with an abstract play taking place and a realistic play as well. A lot, again, uh, of experimentation with, uh, if not a new form, a little used form. Mm -hmm. It seemed as though it was too much to also throw in a homosexual relationship mm -hmm. that we ought to give the audience certain things to hang on to while we were taking them so far afield with other things. It was the right thing to do because the show ran a long time, but it was an equally the right thing to do when they made the movie to go back to the initial material because by then the public had made a great step forward and was willing to accept that. Why have you not had more interest in making movies yourself? It would seem to me that the same challenges, maybe, or whatever, could, you could find them there. Uh, well, it... it I did make, I made two. Mm -hmm. uh, the first turned out very well, the second turned out only half well. Uh, there, it's, not, it's not as inviting because it's not as autonomous, or at least it isn't if I do it. I'm not a successful movie director, so I can't run the whole show myself. And there are just too many people with too many opinions, and it's discouraging. And you feel as if there's something getting between you and the final product. 
Uh, I made a movie I was proud of called uh, uh, Something for Everyone. And uh, I was sitting in Europe when the movie was coming out in New York, and someone sent me a full page ad in the newspapers with a picture of Lansbury and Michael York, and it said, uh, Hal Prince, Angela Lansbury, and Michael York all made it together in Germany. And I thought, I thought, <laughs> now, wait a minute. That's not what we were doing, and that's not what this picture's about. Well, even if it were, it's none of our business. <laughs> So, so I called New York and I said, gee, that's a crummy joke. And they said, all right, we'll change it. And two weeks later, the ad was, the butler did it, dot, 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 to everyone. And I didn't think that was too classy either. No. Those kind of things don't get in the way, get into plays because as a director, I'm consulted <laughs> about things like that. By the way, is it, I think it's just time for you to tell us, uh, what, what is the Hell Prince game? Can you buy you this at that? the... Uh, no. The I'm the only one who's ever won it. Department store? Sondheim made up a board game, uh, quite an extraordinary game, about producing plays. And mm -hmm. you took them out of town, you financed them, you cast them, and so on. Uh, I'm the only one who's ever won that game. That's how, uh, that, that's how good I think the game is. It means it requires a lot of knowledge about technicalities about producing. The trouble with the game is it, it takes as long to play as probably to put on a show. Five or six hours. That's discouraging, you know, to people who play games. Is it actually made by... Oh, it's an incredible game. It's so sophisticated and, and uh, no, it's, it's a marvelous game. But I just wish he'd compressed it to an hour or something like that. He went to the trouble of making a board oh, that, yes, that is printed and, and, and... Yes, absolutely, and money and, and all those little things you turn over that tell you to go back to beginning again and, <laughs> and that sort of thing. But it's a, you know, it's a very, very bright game because there, I couldn't find a flaw in, in the reasoning, you know. Uh, if you produced a play properly on that board, the play worked. Where can you get hold of this? People will be wanting it, but... Uh, I think he has the only copy somewhere. I locked away, I hope. In, in the last five seconds, are, are, are even you as good as your last show? As, as the same sure, that's, that's the best thing about Broadway. It's the most frustrating, I guess, as a human being, but it's the best thing about Broadway. You just, you just are as good. Each time you go to bat, you go for the first time. Mm. Well, for heaven's sake, keep your eye on the ball, because we need you. <laughs> Hell, Prince, we're out of time again. The time has flown or fle fleeted. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Hell, Prince, we'll see you next time. Good night.